from familiar with the ministry, the ministry the Lord's blessed me with. Uh, as you know, I haven't been doing so much lately. Just a little here, a little there, a little. Uh, I'm getting back into it more. Uh, just been studying for more revelation and understanding, and seeking God for the understanding of the scriptures, so that um, so that um, when I speak, it's more Him, the Spirit of Truth, speaking in me and through me. Um, one thing I've learned about the Bible is that it's God's opinion. Revelation knowledge is God's opinion. It's God's revelation. It's God's word concerning whatever it is that we're studying on. I believe that the scriptures, the Holy Bible, is written by prophets as they were moved by the Spirit of God. So, um, I've um, got I've got a teaching on the race on earth before Adam and. Uh, it's word for word in the Bible, and a lot of you don't are not familiar with that. And the old uh, back in the back in the old days, the old school way was uh, the pre-Adamic race. I originally did that teaching with that title. and got hardly any views. The Lord told me it wasn't that it was just bad, or people didn't believe. It was just that they don't understand that title. So I changed it to the pre-Adamic. Uh, what did I change it to? The race on earth before Adam. I got all kinds of views on there. People wanted me to do a second one, so I did. Um, so it's, it's how you title things and how you word things, and I've learned. So um, I just did another one called um, Angels in the Flesh on Earth After Adam's Time. Uh, it speaks of the angels that took on flesh and became corrupt. You know, uh, these are just things that pastors don't teach over the years. Pastors, just uh, there are very few that do. Uh, they used to teach it more uh, back in the day, uh, years ago. And uh, we just have to keep up these doctrines. We have a lot of great men of the faith who are passing away and are no longer with us anymore who used to teach these things. And if we don't have anyone to carry on the oracles of God, you know, we have to make sure that the, these teachings and the proof, the scripture proof, and the revelation stays alive, especially in these last days. And also, I've been studying the end time, the Book of Revelation, when all uh, all the all the events that take place, which we are now living in. So I've been doing a lot of videos on that too. I've got a video on angels too that I'm going to redo. Um, so, but one of the things I wanted to talk about was um, this this question's uh, frequently asked often. You know, why didn't God destroy the devil? You know, when the devil fell from heaven, why didn't he just Destroy him all together, leave him in hell in the bottomless pit forever. You know, don't let him tempt Adam and Eve. Just let them be. Okay, and uh, why does God, and another one is, on top of that, why does God allow the devil to bring so much evil and corruption? And why does God allow bad things to happen? Um, so many questions out there, and I believe the Lord has given me some answers. Um, you know, when you think about it, that when God created all the angels, um, it's, it's obvious that God created angels before man. Uh, and Psalms mentions how the angels shouted for joy uh, at the foundation of the earth when God created everything. So um, when he first created all the angels, what was the first thing they saw when God created the angels? When they were birthed, when they were born, what was the first thing they saw? It was God, the face of God. They were born to worship God. They were, so to speak, almost programmed, so to speak, to worship God. And all the creation was pretty much born and created to worship God. Um, without any free will as far as a decision to do the opposite. They were just born doing it. That's all they knew to do. Cry holy, holy, holy 24-7 as found in the book of Revelation. Lucifer fell because of his pride and jealous and um, I've got another teaching that I'm coming out with that talks about the stones that Lucifer had in his chest. If you read Ezekiel 28 where it talks about thou hast been placed in Eden, meaning Lucifer, uh, as, an, as the anointed cherub that covered the whole garden. It talks about the stones. The, 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 he was a priest. He had a priestly uh, breastplate on with nine stones which represents the nine tribes that he led into worship okay 
And then it talks about him walking up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. I'm doing a video that's going to break down what I believe those stones are and uh, i've been it's been a tough one but i've been really praying and really asking god and he showed me what those stones are and i've looked on youtube i've looked on google i've looked at every minister that i could find that preach on those stones and i can't find anyone really people were hinting about it but i believe the lord gave me the word on that that's going to be a good one got to get that one i, I gotta i gotta get together on that one and do that video but um, Lucifer fell, and I believe that Adam and Eve, us, so to speak, and a uh, as 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 humanity was created as Lucifer and his original inhabitants, his followers, we are his replacements. Okay, Lucifer fell. You know, he he was the second most. He was one of the most powerful angels, I believe. I mean, he had so much, you know, but he wanted more. I believe one day he looked up, saw the glory of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and wanted all three. And God throws him out of heaven, creates Adam and Eve, and not only in his image, but in his likeness, and gives them the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I believe that angels don't possess the Spirit of God or the glory of God's presence like we do. Um, the way that we're called to walk in that image is much differently, you know. Um, just like a sinner, uh, just like the angels rejoice when a sinner gets saved. I believe that when a saint overcomes the world, flesh, and the devil, when the, when a saint overcomes the trials and tribulations of the devil, I believe that the angels rejoice as well. And it gives them the, uh, it gives them the authority to go forth and bring us another dimension of heavenly worship as the victory has been carried out. And they begin to praise and worship God off of that and learning the wisdom of God and the glory of God and that he is still God off of the overcomer, off of the saint overcoming by the spirit and the power of the living God. And I'll explain that to you in a second. Like I, back to what I was saying earlier. Every angel was created to worship God. And this is another reason why I don't think God made a big deal about it when Satan and a third of the angels fell. Because, you see, when Satan fell and his angels, they made a, those, the third of those angels made a conscious decision for the first time not to worship God. And the rest of the angels made a conscious decision for the first time. That they're going to worship God. Okay. So now you have all of heaven that didn't fall with Lucifer and a third of his angels worshiping God. Not because they were created to worship God or they were programmed to worship God. Now that, that day true worship was birthed. That day angels were truly assigned and set for glory. And trusted with more a greater heavenly altitude in my opinion. Now I can't prove all this scripture. But I believe, this is most of it's my opinion, and a lot of it, you know, could be in part of the opinion, revelation, I believe it is. It's my opinion, I report, you decide. So, here God creates a man, a mud man, a man out of the dust, breathes upon him, and God creates a living soul, Adam, Eve, or the body of Adam, however you, however some, however some believe. I've got another teaching on that that's just like wow and it's in the Bible um, that Adam and Eve God created Adam as his replacement as Lucifer's replacement worship leader and and the reason why I say that is because if you think about it like I said angels were originally created to worship God this is why God, uh, this is going to reveal why God didn't just destroy the devil. Okay, I believe that the real way of destroying the devil and creating sons of God in the process was proving to the devil that God is still God and that the devil will never be able to catch God in a lie because that's Satan's always wanted to catch God in a lie because then he would cease to be in God and he would overtake the throne. So, uh, so that God creates a man who never seen God and who never seen him face to face 
um, scripture says that no uh, no man can, has seen God and lived. I'm not 100% sure and who exactly he saw walking in the garden in the cool of the day. I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, my point is, God created man who is now born and now shaping in iniquity. We are born in sin and we are shaping in iniquity. You see? We don't see God. We wasn't born seeing God. We wasn't you and I wasn't born worshiping God. But yet, blessed are those who believe and have not seen, because that is true worship right there. So God cast the devil out of heaven, and said, "All right, I'm going to create man in my image and after my likeness, and there's going to be a many. And yeah, you're going to you're going to trip him up, but there's going to be many coming after him who's going to worship a God they've never seen before. You see, you know, that's true worship." Not because they were born to worship God. After all, they were born in shape of iniquity, but they will worship me, you know, a God they've never seen. Now that's true worship, okay? And God is displaying that he is still God over his people. His prophecies will still come to pass. 144,000 will still come to pass and, re and ruin the peace pack of the Antichrist, causing the devil to lose that great battle, which he's already lost already, okay? That I believe that, um, so what happens is, you know, if you look at Job, you know, for an example, a man who was also born, shaped in iniquity, like everyone else, of course he was one of the most righteous men found in his day, comes along, the devil's going around to and fro, if you read Job chapter 1, going around to and fro, the winds cometh thou, he said, walking to and fro, up and down on the earth and in it, up and down on it and in it. So God kind of helps them out. We like to say that, you know, the devil had to ask for permission. I believe that, but if you read this, if you read the scripture in Job chapter 1, God actually sees the devil going, looking whom he may devour, and helps him out and says, well, hey, have you considered my servant Job? The devil's like, uh, but wait a minute, he fears you, he, you got to hedge it, not that he fears you, he's this, he's that, not to mention, you got to hedge around him. Uh, but yeah, I guess you're on to something, surely if you let me have at it, surely he will curse you, surely God's sitting back saying, nah, he won't curse me, he will worship me, you know, he will worship a God that he can't see when you couldn't do it, and it will prove that I am God. To all my holy angels in heaven and to the people in the earth realm that I am who I am and you ain't nothing but the devil so God shows a triumphant victory constantly over and over through his believers God only needs one he only needs two he only Jesus came along and proved it already so you know, and I really believe that the angels look unto the things of salvation every time you and I overcome you know, the Apostle Paul told Peter to, to rage a good warfare because of the prophecies that went before him. Why? Because you have to go through a spiritual warfare. You have to live holy. See, the spiritual warfare is over holiness. Will you stay holy? Will you keep worshiping God? Will you bless God when, when you get into a car accident and you just bought this brand new car six months ago? Huh, huh, yeah, that was me. I just got into a car accident the other day. <laughs> See, will you still worship God? Were you, is he still God when you don't know how you're going to get back and forth to work and you don't know how you're going to pay your bill? You see, will you still worship God? See, Psalm 23rd chapter says, Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Okay, thou anoints my head with oil. That's the wisdom. And the area that the devil attacks you in is that if the devil has any kind of power to come against you and prevail. It's because in that area that he attacks you and God is blessing you. And the area that the devil attacks you in, the area you're getting blessed in, okay? Many times in every area I've gotten attacked, I've gotten blessed shortly after that. As you know, Job, the situation with Job, he was getting attacked on every side. His house burnt up, his kids, everything. Look what happens a little bit later. He got blessed with twice the inheritance. So, the area that the devil attacks you in, you see, <laughs> he, it's actually promoting you. But see, the devil's trick is to get your eyes off of a God that you can't see. 
Will you worship God no matter all hell breaks loose? Will you believe that he's still God when your bills don't get paid, when you don't know how you're going to live to see another day? Will you still worship God? Because the devil's a lie. And God is still faithful. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. See, this is why God won't destroy the devil, because he needs to use him as a tool to refine you, to show that he is still God, and the devil's a liar. The devil's losing the battle every time a saint. All God needed was one, and that was Jesus Christ. <laughs> and on the day of Pentecost, suddenly there was 12 of them. <laughs> and now today there are millions all over the face of the earth. Oh, Jesus. My goodness, the Bible said they overcome him by the, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. <laughs> oh, my goodness, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And let me tell you something. I'm happy. I'm excited. We worship a God that we can't see. Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. We make That's true worship. This is why God allowed the devil to do what he's done for so long. So that in all eternity, even, after, even in the book of Revelation, even after the rapture takes place, after the tribulation of those days, the tribulation of the persecution of the Antichrist, not the tribulation of the, the wrath of God, and then later on, the wrath of the Lamb, who's going to gather those and throw those into the winepress of the wrath of God and trample them, and so on and so forth. And the blood of those will be so thick it will come up to our bridles. Of course, that's the return of Christ with the raptured saints, okay, to defeat and defend Israel, the 144,000. Uh, Ephesians chapter chapter 3 verse 8 that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in all things both in heaven and on earth even in him it's called the great assemblies in heaven in Hebrews <laughs> Mount Zion <laughs> oh Jesus um, I believe when that great city comes down shortly after that on Jerusalem shortly after that great battle that Armageddon so with that in mind um, at, during that time, Satan will be bound a thousand years, and after the thousand year reign, during those thousand years, the holy city will be present on earth with only the resurrection saints living in that city with the 144,000. And I believe there'll be throughout the thousand years, people will be born who never got a chance to be tested and tempted like you and I by the devil. <laughs> okay, who and then suddenly after the thousand years, the the, uh, uh, um, the graves. Uh, after the thousand years, Satan and all those in, uh, in the grave, all those in hell were loose one last time. And of course, Satan gathered them and tempted them and they all fell. And they all gathered the city to overtake the city. And as you know, as you read the scriptures, fire comes down and devours them all forever and ever and ever. See, they're going to have to take that test too. So, it's amazing. God is doing that. He's, 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 he's reaping the harvest. He's... And uh, the, uh, when the wrath of the Lamb comes with, this, with the third coming, with, with the church, returning back with the church, on Enoch prophesied of these, uh, uh, Christ's return with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment. To, uh, and that's when he will uh, reap, uh, that's when he'll thrust in his sickle and reap his harvest. And that's when he will, that's when we will know the full revelation and the mystery of God will be completed. And we will know who the true worshipers are for all of eternity. Oh, glory. God is so brilliant. He's such a mastermind in his plan. And I see it. The Lord has revealed it to me. And that's why God is not destroying the devil <laughs> that easy. <laughs> He's going to let him suffer a little while longer before uh, he... Uh... And when his peace pack fails and 144,000 get saved and his peace pack... And God is destroying his peace pack uh, by the wrath of God falling upon those who took the mark of the beast, at that point he will know he's got a short time. So let's let's read that in this proper context. But I'm working on those things too. As you can tell that I'm working on the book of Revelation and then I've given you a couple of nuggets, peace things here and there, what I believe. So there's your answer to why God is allowing evil to take place. Everyone, you know, Jesus said that the, that the gospel will be, be preached in all the world and then the end shall come. So everyone will have a chance, okay? Um, uh, children who've died. What about children who die? They go to heaven. You know, Paul said that when I was, when I became of the age of accountability, the law of sin slew me and I died. Of course, you had to get born again. Okay, children all go to heaven. There are no babies in, 
there are no babies in hell. Everyone's going to heaven. Jesus said to, to offend one of these little children, it's better to cast a millstone around your neck and throw it into the deepest sea, for their angels go before them, before the face of the heavenly Father. So we see that the little children have angels. And, of course, angels are hindered, too, because... Uh, Children do get kidnapped, so on and so forth, and we need to be praying for them every time um, an alert takes place. So this is why God doesn't destroy the devil. This is why God allows all evil to happen for this short little bit of time space. And it's going to be worth it in the long run because one day the lion will lay, the, uh, the lamb and the lion will lay together and your little child will be able to pet the lion and, um, you know, so on and so forth. But, um, so yeah, this is why I believe why God doesn't destroy the devil because he has to prove that he's God and um, not for the sake that he has to prove that he's God but he he's revealing himself as God for the sake of true worshipers okay the devil actually thinks he's getting a shot at something and really he's not he's just I don't know he's crazy <laughs> God bless you and I love you and uh, if you don't um, me and my wife are praying for you and uh, and uh, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have not accepted Him in your heart, and you're ready to surrender your life, you're ready to repent, you're ready to give your life over to the Lord, and you've been praying, and you've been asking God for certain answers, and maybe you got them during this video, I don't know. But God knows your heart. In Romans chapter 10, verse 8 and 9, it says that if you confess it with your, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that shall be saved. Okay. So just pray with me right here. Just follow me right now in this prayer. Father God, I ask for your forgiveness for all my sins. I accept your son Jesus. Wash me in his blood. I confess my sins to you. You know every sin I've committed, Father. Wash me in your blood. Receive me now. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit right now, Father. Fill me refresh, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father God. If you said that prayer, congratulations. That's the biggest battle you could ever win. That's the biggest battle that could be won. Okay. Um, um, read the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Acts, to find out, to begin to learn and start discipling, start reaching out, pray, start, uh, pray for a covering, pray for an, an apostolic prophet or an apostle or a pastor. Pray that God will send you somebody that can build you up in the faith and uh, somebody who's nourished up in sound doctrine and to who can mentor you until Christ is formed in you. It's a heck of a journey ahead of us, but it's worth it. God bless you, and there's power in the Word.